Right guys, I am trying again. So what's happened over the last uh, 10, what are we at, 10 minutes or so, is I'm trying to stream live, um, but there's been a problem with uploading. Um, kind of out of my hands as far as it's an issue for the servers. So uh, I'm just gonna be hanging about before I get de delve deep into any kind of tech chat. I just wanna make sure that everything is okay. It's unfortunately something that you need to deal with. Seems a little bit better now. Um, right, let me know if you can watch this stream and you can watch it and it's not choppy and there's no problems or anything like that. Um, so it has been a few months since I've chatted to you all. Uh, it's not freezing now. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks for letting me know. Um, I'll just pop out this chat um, so I can see all your comments. I think I know what the issue is. So basically, a few months ago or last year, I started using a... Where is that? Why is that not doing that? Can I pop out this chat? I started using a, a service that allows me to stream to multiple different um, channels like Twitter and Facebook and things like that. The problem is when you do that, you need to upload to their fair service and they encode it and then deliver it to YouTube in different places. And clearly they are having major issues today. They obviously can't handle the demand with the pandemic, coronavirus and all that. Uh, so yes, despite paying $400, $500 for that service, it's not working and that's what was happening there. So hopefully it's okay now. Hopefully you can watch the stream now and hopefully we can start chatting. I hate when things like this happen because it's a very difficult thing to troubleshoot because everything is actually set up correctly as far as, you know, the settings, the video settings. I don't touch anything once it's working, it's working. Um, but when there's any kind of server issues, yeah, there's, there's not much you can do but press the, the go live button and, and see what happens. Um, Right, hopefully we're good to go. We'll see what happens here. We'll just see, I'm just wanna check some other things here. But the, the what I'm trying to fix now is the fact that the, the comment box that I was looking at is now expired and I need to refresh the page and then load it again. My God, things always go wrong when you, when you do it live, always. Always, 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 right. Right, I think, I think we're good to go, just about. Just need to take this out and I can see the chat. Okay, okay, okay. There we go, and I, I can now see your comment now, Patrick. So uh, I noticed a few were commenting before, before all of this happened, so I apologize. I apologize that all of that was happening. Um, Welcome back to YouTube, eh? Welcome back to YouTube. Welcome back to YouTube. Right, now I've probably got a, 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 cold, a cold coffee. Yeah, yeah, I know, what the, I know what the issue is. It's because I went through that other service. Um, yeah, so I know, I know what the problem is. I know what the, the problem is. Um, I bet ugh. the problem is as well though the like YouTube sends out signals to social media to say that you know basically they'll be posting to the older live stream so I don't know if people will see this live stream or not we'll see what happens we'll see what happens so how are you guys how are you all it's been it is a little over two months it is a little over two months um, since I actively did videos so yeah, it's the first one in a while and I need to delete some videos there and here. This whole thing's annoying. Hey Ultra, good to, good to see you. So um, this, um, yeah, this is my first video, first live stream in two months. And um, yeah, just wanted to do a live stream, as I said the other day in a video. Um, it's been a minute. Right, okay, yeah, it should be okay now. It should be okay. I know I know what the problem is. Um it, it wasn't my it was the service that I use. 
to to it's called restream it sends it to different places and it is not working today which means that yeah well you saw what that means how are you all been anyway how are you all coping obviously this is a very this is obviously a very strange time um with what's going on the last few months um that's got no relation to why i wasn't doing videos um but yeah, it's, it's, it's a very strange time. The, the funny thing is, a lot of people kept saying to me, it was like, why aren't you doing videos? Like, my girlfriend was saying that, why don't you do videos? This is the perfect time to do videos. You know, everyone's at home, everyone's watching YouTube more and things like that. But, um, yeah, it's been an interesting, interesting time the last few months, to say the least, in it. By, by the looks of it, um, it's going to be a while until we're kind of out of this. I know the weather has been really good. The weather has been really good. To be honest, I mean, this is an issue I deal with every year. We are, people are going on, going on about how amazing the weather is, but I'm inside typing, you know, writing articles, doing website work or working on videos or something. And I don't always get to see the weather anyway, but um, yeah, I mean, the, the funny thing is, there's probably a lot of people who are going to be experiencing this good weather that they didn't before because they're, they're off work. Um, you know, I've, I've noticed that myself, like, like I've tried to get back into running the last few weeks, so um, I hadn't really run for a while, my fitness was really bad, um, and I started running, and I've never seen so many people out in the streets in my life. Like, when you're running, you obviously know, like, this, you know, when you're running the roads, there's times when you go into the pavement, and then you need to get out of the way because someone's there, but even at the weekend, I don't recall a time when all the roads have been this busy, as far as I'm going running, and I'm constantly having to, to go by people because people are out with their families, people are out walking in the sunshine, they're trying to get their kids out. Um, it's just bizarre that we're in a lockdown and there's more people outside than ever before. That's what it is, I guess. Um, but yeah, uh, and that's one. That's the one, I've only got one thing to unbox today that I was going to show you um, and it's related to running. But um, yeah, it, it's, it, it's weird though because Normally I do like I don't know what, I don't know about you guys but I, I normally try to go to a few classes through the week and go to the gym. For me it's very important just because I need to get out of the house because I work from home. Um, but I've just been going out running instead. But because I'm building up my fitness, I've only been running twice a week. I still can't run, you know, longer distances yet. But how have you all been anyway? How have you all been anyway? The strange thing is. It doesn't look like any major tech, like major, major tech companies are kind of behind on their schedule as far as releases go. Um, we saw, obviously, the, the biggest release or the biggest news recently is the iPhone SE 2, which is out, I think, is it this this Friday, is it? I, I might be wrong there. It could be this week. I think it's maybe out this week. I can double check that just now. Um, Pre-order. When do you get it? Doesn't actually say. But, um... Your self-isolation finishes today. Oh, wait, were you sick, Ultra? Were you sick? Oh, is it tomorrow? Right, I knew, I thought I thought it was this Friday. I had it stuck in my head it was this Friday, but, um, which is now tomorrow. I keep thinking it's Wednesday. Um, hi, Simon. So, what, so it sounds like, oh, your sister was ill. Well, I hope she's, I hope she's better now, Ultra. It, was it the same situation for you, Simon? There's someone in your family was ill and you had to self-isolate? Is that what you had to do? Uh, the Key 30 Pro. I think I think uh, Chris from Tech Tablets reviewed that one recently, didn't he, Evo? I think he did. I think that was what I saw him post on Twitter. I've not seen the video yet. Because um, the K20 Pro was the one that I was trying to get last year and then I decided against it. Hey, Paul. Now watch the UK price. I'll check that just now, actually. I'll check the, the UK price just now on that. Um, 419, by the looks of it. 419. Um, it's funny, like, when you come up here, look, they've, they said if you've got a phone to trade in, if you got a phone to trade in, um, no. Where's the bit that just says, let me buy this? I don't want to... Oh, there it's a 4 419. So where's the buy it now prices? Because 419 is normally for the smallest capacity. So there it's there. 419... All right, I'll just pick red. 
419 for a 64, 469 for 128, 569 for a 256. So see, see what they've done here. This is a very, very common marketing technique where they make the top one too expensive, they make the, the bottom one not good value, and the reason being that they want everyone to buy the middle one. This is tried and tested, like I've read lots of articles about this, where they make the top one not good value, purposely make it not good value because they know that the people who want to buy that one will buy it anyway, so they can put a premium on it. And then you've got the one that, you know, the people that can't afford that one, so they drop it in price. Really, paying, what, £50 less for the 64, you really should jump up to the 128. So that's the one, 469, I would say is the one that everyone should go for. 0% APR is actually pretty good. Uh, it's through Barclays right enough, it's a loan, but still, still pretty good, 0% APR. Um, yeah, so 469, it looks to be the price. 469 looks to be uh, the price there. Simon, so, mean, oh, you're on di dialysis. So I was actually asking this, uh, I was as asking my girlfriend about this last night, Simon. Um, I, I really didn't know much about what dialysis did as far as the actual, you know, process it, of it all. Um, but a friend from mine from training, so when I go to like my boxing class and training class through the week, me and my friends are some of the youngest guys in the class because apart from like one or two guys that are like in the early 20s, uh, I'm 40, I'm an old guy now. But uh, most of the guys are the late 50s, early 60s, just old guys that used to do karate and stuff like that. And one of the guys, Eddie, is actually sadly in hospital and he's been on a ventilator for three or four weeks. So I think it's about three weeks now. But he's on dialysis and, you know, I was asking my girlfriend, my girlfriend's a doctor, so I was asking her to explain it last night. Because uh, obviously it's a very serious thing, so you'll be, yeah, you're obviously higher risk with that. Patrick, being in full lockdown since the start, got sore eyes with too much watching screens. I never thought I would say that and I'm getting fatter. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing as well, Patrick. And that's why I've got out running because um, I noticed it myself. Like, I've got this weird thing in my brain that I don't realise when I'm putting on weight until a certain point. I, I, it sounds stupid. And then, like, the, the penny drops in my head and I just, like, my whole mindset completely flips. Um, years ago, years ago, um, I did, like, the first time I did marathons, I did three marathons over six, seven weeks. And I was quite light, you know, I'd lost a lot of weight. You don't have a lot of muscle mass because you're running. Um, and I lost a lot of weight, but then I had an injury. I didn't run for six months. Now, I didn't know this, but at the time, the weight was slowly and slowly and slowly creeping on. But the weird thing is, I was so skinny beforehand that I didn't really notice it. And then it got to like December and I looked in the mirror and I was like, ah, whoa. You know what I mean? I had the big double chin and all that. And then the very next morning, I just went out running. I'm like, no, it's protein shakes. It's all the, all the, the fat stuff's gone out. Um, yeah, but I think a lot of people will be in the same, will be in the same boat. Just like the, the telephoto lens is mad. Oh, is that the, the K30 Pro? Yeah, I'll check, I'll bring that up as well. The Red Magic 5G. Is the Red Magic the one with the crazy 144 hertz screen? Or am I getting mixed up? Uh, Paul's saying the design and the, the massive bezels look dated. Um, it's interesting, right? So I've only watched a few videos of the, the iPhone SE 2. Now to me, this to me isn't as appealing as the first SE. As far as the first SE phone was like the iPhone 4 chassis, it was properly small. But now, like these bezels are absolutely humongous. There's no way of getting around it. The bezels on this phone are huge. They're absolutely huge. Um, and it's one of those things. I think having the button, the, the Apple button down the bottom, the, the, the finger, uh, fingerprint button down the bottom, I don't think that's a bad thing. It's that this bezel at the top though, it looks massive. The one thing is going to, got it going on for it though, is it's got the same CPU, I think the A13 I think it is, as the main phone. So that's a really fast CPU, probably faster than any Android CPU at the moment. But obviously the, the, the price you're paying is that you're getting a, well, you're getting a, a screen, a, a phone with a, a screen that's not as good, you know, it's an LCD touch display with IPS, 326 PPI, which is pretty low. I mean, it's one of those things, you know, as far as being functional, I like the idea of having the A13 chip as far as everything being quick, but you are kind of stepping back in time. Now, 
one of the things I do find annoying about, I mean, this is not just Apple, but all phone companies is that it's got to the point now where wherever they're advertising a phone, they spend three or four pages talking about all their phone, uh, the photograph capabilities, the camera capabilities. And, and all these pictures look amazing. The problem with all of these pictures is that even basic Android phones can take really good pictures like this if you've got good lighting. And really what you want to see is low light photos. You want to see low light photos, but you're not going to see that, you know, in their marketing campaigns. Um, 144 hertz, all ah, right, okay, I was right with that one. But um, yeah, I kind of got off track there, but what Paul was talking about there, the bezels, I saw some people talking about that, saying that obviously some YouTubers must be on the payroll of Apple as far as they get the device sent to them early, they get invited to all their special Apple conferences and things like that. And large tech companies are very manipulative with this kind of thing. Uh, Sony have been guilty of it, Canon, all the camera companies, all the phone companies where they send out things to YouTubers and they don't mind a little bit of criticism, but if anyone comes out and starts criticizing them, Certainly if you're at the kind of lower end of the large YouTubers, you know, if you've got a million subscribers even and you start criticizing the product, they will just simply stop inviting you to these conferences. So they're kind of, you know, they're kind of put in this really awkward position where in order for them to continually put out good reviews and the latest reviews, which is the big thing in YouTube, they need to go to these events. And if they criticize the products too much, they won't get invited to the events, which means that all the, the, the video reviews become pointless because they're, they're all overwhelm, overwhelmingly positive. But what what Paul was saying there as far as the bezels being really big, really looking really dated, I saw a few YouTubers and a few people on Reddit talking about this and just saying that, like, what are these people talking about? Why are they not talking about the fact that this looks like a phone from 10 years ago, you know, with the bezels? The LCD is really, uh, really poor as well. Yeah, as you say, they are no night mode. Short battery life as well, um, which is a concern. Um, so... Yeah, it's what I mean. I do like the idea of the phone, though, uh, though. I do like the idea of a smaller phone. Like, it's one of the reasons why I went for the P30 last year is that I like the, the idea of the phone being a little bit smaller. And I must admit, after having like the, the Samsung phone last year, it was huge in my pocket. And then I went to this, I really did think this was better. But this is the same CP, CPU and things like that, so it wasn't a huge sacrifice. It's got good battery life as well. Um, the K30, right? So, I'll check out the K30 Pro as well. Uh, Flood of Sins. Oh, thanks, mate. Thanks. It's kind of bittersweet that it happened when I wasn't really doing any videos because it feels like it, I didn't deserve it almost. Um, yeah, but... Um, oh, K30 Pro. Heads up mass today because it... See, because so if, you, if you've just logged in at the start, uh, Ultra and Evo and that were there. I started the live stream and because I was going through on this other service, the whole thing was... I was getting 10 frames per second, so I was doing all this. Um... Right, okay. I'll, I'll bring up I'll bring up the GSM Arena one first, just to kind of familiarise myself with this. Um, <laughs> yeah, you've got a ridiculous amount of phones. To be honest, this is the thing. I talk about phones a lot, but to be honest, over the last three years, I've only been buying one phone per year. I keep planning on buying a second one, and then I go out and I spend money on different equipment, and then I think, uh, you know, like a few months ago, I was going to buy the new iPhone, and then I bought two laptops, I bought lights, I bought, I basically spent about four or five grand in the space of like three weeks, and I was like, right, I shouldn't buy a phone now. Um, but I'd like to buy another phone just out of principle at one point. Paul, the battery life would be pretty decent. It's got a 4.7 inch display in the A13 Bionic, which is very efficient. The screen resolution will make it a better battery life. That's a, that's a good point, Ultra. The the low the low res uh, screen will help with battery life. This is a joke. They must be off their head getting one of them for over four hundred. I've got the Huawei Mate Twenty X five G paid five hundred and fifty pound. It's a beast. Seven point two inches. <laughs> There's tablets that sell for for seven. You know, with a seven inch screen. You've basically got a tablet in your pocket. Paul's got eight or nine phones. Wow. I mean, I really should, like from a YouTuber's point of view, reviewing phones and reviewing phone cases and all that, I realise there's a big demand for that kind of thing, but I really should pick up some other phones. Um, I'll see though, you know, like what I've been mostly doing over the last two years uh, is just buying things that I need. And to be honest, I don't really need another phone just now. I'll end up buying one because of battery life or whatever, but um, I just buy the equipment that I need um, rather than going out to buy, you know, multiple phones. 
But I do, I do like to buy a new phone every year so that I've got, um, you know, a fast phone. And the thing is, this is the thing I didn't really know. This, this has got. Is this one got the Kirin chip? Is this one got the? I can't remember now. But the the CPU in this compared to the A55, I think it was the year before, was it? Maybe the four five. I'm comparing this to the the Android phone I had the year before. Uh, this wasn't that much faster than it, and there's the always there's always strange situations with this phone where it's a little bit sluggish if I'm using Twitter or different things if I'm watching videos. So it's an efficient chip, but it's not as powerful as I would have liked compared to a Snapdragon. All right, you sent me a link via Twitter. Thanks, Ultra. I'll check that out. Um, right, so I'll bring this up. So this is the the picture that Ultra just sent me on Twitter. And if I load it up, the frog eggs I shot with my Xiaomi Redmi K30 Pro, what do they look like? That's pretty amazing. Um, I mean, I, I must admit, see, after getting the the, jam, the, the Poco phone, was that a year and a half ago or something, which my mum now uses, um, I'm, I'm, I'm so impressed with Xiaomi. And, you know, this is the thing. A lot of these big companies will come out with kind of negative campaigns against Chinese companies. I realise there's, you know, a lot of security issues that are com being, uh, coming out in the news. But um, I was so impressed with Xiaomi. I mean, like, a year and a half, two years after the phone came out, and they're still rolling out updates for the phone, so... Yeah, it's pretty impressive in that regards. You know, I know when I bought the HTC phone, they did one update over the course of a year, and it and it actually crashed the phone. It didn't. It stopped the battery from from performing. Um, Simon Cena's seven-inch phone is quite manageable. Sold it on eBay. Or right, you sold the the twenty X. The Poco phone is like £200 grade A from CEX. Oh, that's the thing. I mean, I only paid 260 or something for the phone brand new. I would definitely buy another Xiaomi phone. I was very impressed with them. Plus, when you're only paying, you know, that kind of money, it's a lot better. I want to have a quick look at the, the Key 30 Pro. Um, I've, I mean, phones, as far as phones, because I wasn't in the market for a phone, I've been looking at some of the news, you know, for new phones over the last two months, but it's really just been through Twitter, like looking at other people's reviews and comments about it rather than looking at detailed reviews. Yeah, HTC has fallen behind so much they might as well sell their company. Well, they kind of did, didn't they? Did they not sell half their company to Google? Was it Google they sold it to? Am I right? Google Pixel they sold it to? I think so. That's Jammy Mi 10 Pro. Is the Mi 10 Pro the one with the 128 megapixel camera? I think I'm right there, I think. Um, so this is the K30 Pro, it's got the little pop-up camera. 6.67 .6 inches, 64 megapixels, 6 or 8 gigabytes of RAM, which is more than enough, I think. 6 gig, I would say, is the benchmark now. Snapdragon 865. Um, yeah, Snapdragon 865, 128 gigabyte storage. So it's got a 64, 5, 13, and 2 megapixel camera, dual LED tone flash. Okay, so it's got 4K at 60 frames per second. Well, that's pretty good. I mean, I still find this funny in the Android world that, you know, again, I'm, I'm speaking selfishly as a, as a YouTuber, but when the Apple came out last year with their iPhone, the, the, the new iPhone has 60, 4K 60 frames per second from the front camera. And it's weird that there's so many Android phones that can do 4K 60, 4K 30, but the front camera is always 1080 30. It's always 1080 30. It's always like a 20 megapixel sensor. It's, it's weird that they've... Um, They've kind of kept it that way. The only the only one that's really addressed that issue is the is this the Zenfone, Zenfone Six that had the swivel camera. That's one I'm paying attention to. The Zenfone uh, Seven, I think it's coming out. It does look good, Dan. It's a good price. Quick charge four as well. I'll may I'll, I, I might end up buying one just uh, just out of principle. One hundred eight megapixels. All right, All right. Thanks for correcting me. Um. The second poker phone sadly bombed. Yeah, well, the that's the thing with with Xiaomi though. What what they were doing was bringing out like a poker phone and then bringing out a variant of the poker phone, calling it something like a K something, and then then they've got the Xiaomi range. They've got like three or four different ranges, which are 
for the most part, 95% the same phone, but they're changing slight things, you know, like they're taking away, like the, I don't know, like they're changing the battery or they're changing the screen size, but underneath it's all the same phone. Well, the, the thing about 4K really is, well, from a video editing point of view, it's, you can crop down the image, but also, and, and this, this is the thing, Paul, because if you're just going to record a video and send it to your friend, 1080p is fine, 1080p 30 is fine, actually, 1080p 60 is really only for action shots, but if you've got 4K um, in your front camera as well, and the front camera is the one that I would probably use more often like that, if you've got 4K at the front, then what it means is that if you've got that 4K video, when you scale it down to 1080p, it's probably going to look better than if you recorded it 1080p. Not all the time, because it's, you know, 4K is just resolution, but um, most of the time, like for example, the Sony camera that I've got, if I can record it 4K and then shrink it down to 1080p, it looks better than when I record it 1080p directly because it's recording with more bandwidth and different things. I'm not an expert on photography or anything like that, or you know, recording videos, but I, I know that there are reasons to go for 4K over 1080p. 8K. <laughs> 8K. 8K will be the next thing that they push to everyone, but there, I think the next generation of consoles will be technically possible to play 8K video, but they'll, they're aiming for 4K 60 for games. Yeah, Paul, yeah. Um, I, I, I do agree with you, Paul, because that's the reason why I don't have, um, I don't really record in 4K for my channel. I still record at 1080p 30 for the main videos and 1080p 60 for any games that I do. But, um, the, the, I mean, it's like you say, it's, it's the files that are massive. Like for me, for example, I've, I've kind of slowly tried to build up some of the infrastructure uh, for going 4K in that my overhead camera can do 4K at 30, my main camera can do 4K at 30, but I've only got one recording, um, what do you call it, video capture device that can do 4K, and it can only do 4K at 30, it can't do 4K at 60. My HDMI switch only does 1080p, so I can't use 4K for that. Then you've got the fact that 4K pushes my computer to the absolute extreme, so editing 4K files, like, Basically what I'm saying is, for me to go for 4K, one, the files are massive like you say, but it's not just that. I would need to update my cameras. I would need to update my PC to a PC that would probably take me about three, four grand to build. I would need to update my HDMI switch, the, the capture device cables. It ends up where it's not just the, the camera that I need to upgrade for 4K. For me to go properly, like for my setup right now, to change from 1080p to 4K properly, I would say minimum five grand, but if I want to do it right, 10 grand. I'm not even joking. That's how much I would have to spend as far as all the recording equipment, all the different things. Because as you say, the files are massive, but it's also the bandwidth. It's also the cables. It's also the everything. It, it all, everything just becomes more expensive, which is kind of weird. It's so, it's so difficult for me to upgrade all of this expensive setup to 4K when there's phones that can do 4K. It's kind of strange. Next one Simon's thinking about getting is a one eight plus. Uh, sorry, one eight one one plus eight pro. I always find that the phones are just not. <laughs> it's kind of backwards because I want to put the number second. Um, the one plus eight pro. I usually only keep phones for a few months. I'll sell them on. One plus eight pro so expensive now, but definitely a flagship now instead of a flagship killer. Yes, I would, I would agree, Simon. Um, I st I've still I've only had one one plus phone. And I only had it for a few weeks and I bought it specifically to do a couple of reviews on this. But after a few weeks, I sold it. But um, I tried to get the very first OnePlus, but they had that really annoying email marketing sign up referral system thing. And eventually after two months of that, I went, nah, screw this company. Um, but at that point, their phones were super cheap. And every year they were just sticking, every time they released a new phone, and they were releasing a phone twice a year. You know, obviously they've got their, their kind of in-between phone. And every time they released a new phone, they would stick $50 on it, $50 on it, $50 on it. So all of a sudden, their $350 phone that came out and the whole marketing campaign was, you know, no excuses, no um, no sacrifices, don't have to pay a lot of money. By the end of it, their phones are just as expensive as a Samsung and not too far away from, um, from Apple phones and all that as well. 
I always found the OnePlus phones to feel quite cheap in the handle. I felt always felt they didn't really have a premium feel to them. They felt kind of cheap, which is fine. I don't mind plastic phones. I actually prefer it in some way because, you know, the, the other phones kind of get scratched easily, but they were charging a premium for it. Redmi releasing a new tablet, tablet with the Snapdragon 765. So the 765 is the kind of mid-range one, isn't it? 8 gigabyte RAM, 120 gigabyte storage, quad speakers, full HD AMOLED, all for less than 300 pounds. That's quite good. Um, you know what I did, guys? I, you know what I did last year? Um, I sold I sold my dad's tablet and then um, I sold my tablet. So I sold my dad's tablet that I'd bought for him and I was surprised that it was still going for a good price. So I'd bought it for like 300, like two or three years ago. And it was still selling for like 200. So after I sold his, I was like, you know what? I'm using my phone more. I'll just sell that as well. So I sold it. I got like 400 pound total one for both tablets. And I was like, that's a good that's a good thing, you know, because I've sold a tablet that's like three years old. I could use it to buy a new one. But I've not bought a new one and I, and I miss using a tablet. It's, it's weird because I've got multiple laptops. I've got a Surface Pro. I've got a Kindle. I've got a phone. But I actually miss using a tablet because that's what I use to watch YouTube videos at night. But I, I would definitely be, I'd definitely look uh, at buying a good tablet at that price, even one cheaper, to be honest. The Redmi Note 9 is a budget phone for under, under £200 and it's a mid range killer. Or oh, the 9S, sorry. Phone prices are getting ridiculous now. It's going to be interesting to see how this all kind of filters down over the next year, though. I suspect some Chinese companies are just going to keep putting out their phones. Um, but, yeah, who knows? I mean, the, the thing is, I've read some articles about this, about the, they keep talking about the economy and things like that, but the, I don't think anyone really knows what's going to happen over the next two years as far as the domino effect of all this pandemic lockdown thing, because there's a lot of people saying that it's going to be a depression for a few years. But there's a lot of other people saying that people are going to come out and start going those holidays and start spending and start doing all this, uh, and it may be a catalyst for the economy to get back up. But um, who, who do you believe? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I forgot to get water, so I've got... A, a big, a big old uh, bottle that's been sitting there for like uh, four or five days or something, nearly a week. Um, do you want, right, so I've, I've only got one thing to unbox today, guys, but I can show you this if you want. This is something I've been looking forward to trying. So these are, these are really interesting, and these are something that I wanted to get because I've been going out running. So these are called Aeropex, well, Aftershocks Aeropex. So you can see them there, the lights reflect on them. Now, if you look at the lady there, very pretty lady, she's got the headphones on and you can see that they're not actually in the ear. So the, these use a thing called bone conduction where it basically, I've never used these before in my life, it's not like a new technology, it's been out for a few years, but these basically sit here in your cheekbones and they vibrate and then you can hear the music. It's bizarre, the, the whole concept is bizarre. Um, it's an interesting concept though, but from a running safety point of view, these things are actually quite good. What happened was I've been using the same like 15 pound of round the back gym headphones for running for years. And I never changed them despite not being amazing quality. I never changed them because they were comfortable. I liked them. Battery was always good when, they were, when the battery was good. Before the battery died, the battery life was good. But um, I was always happy with them, the, bit, the, the battery died. So I had another pair of headphones, just kind of like in-ear headphones, and they just always fall out. They always fall out, which is why I want to get one that goes round the back. Um, yeah, bone conduction. It says at the back there actually. Um, so I looked into this. Now you'll see you'll see very mixed reviews about this though, because a lot of people say these are amazing, swear by them, they love it, but a lot of other people say that the audio quality is terrible. So um oh, have you tried them? So what's it like then, Paul? Is it bizarre? I've honestly, I don't know what to expect here. The principle behind this though is that the audio quality isn't amazing. But what you can do is you can hear people around you. So the audio quality wise, you're probably going to get the same audio quality as buying a pair of £10 headphones. That's not going to be great. These retail at $150, £150 in the UK. I did the cheap option and paid 85 from Hong Kong from eGlobal because I was happy to wait two weeks to save that money. Um, but a lot of people say that for running, these are one of the best options because, from a safety point of view, because you can hear 
people around you. Now, you can't really use these in the gym. If you're in the gym, the music in the gym, the, the, in all gyms play music, the music from the gym will be louder than the music that you hear here, hear here, that you hear with these headphones. But the idea is that when you're running, you, you can hear things around you, which, which is important. Is There's always been a few times that I'm running and then I went like that and I saw there was a car coming and just because you've got the music on, you, you just couldn't hear the, the car driving up. So um, I can unbox these if you want to have a look at them. There's absolutely no reason to spend a thousand quid on a phone anymore. The mid-ranger specs are superb for the price. Yeah, I mean, I, I would 100% agree with that, Paul. And I, I, think, I think most of my viewers are in that category. I was tempted to get the iPhone last year. I was very tempted to get it, simply because of the video capabilities. But in the Android world, world especially, you've got a phone that costs £250. It's got the same CPU as a phone that's got £1,000. Same CPU, same benchmark, same specs for recording video and taking photographs and all that. And it's weird that some people will just go out and spend that much to get the phone. It's kind of bizarre when there's so many cheap options out there. From from um, from memory, they were comfortable. Right, so... I'll, get, I'll have a... Yes, I've got it there. My trusty Stanley knife. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how this goes on. I'll do. A, I'll do a proper review after I've been out and ran with them and stuff like that. I'll, I'll give you my opinion on them, good or bad. I'll see what I like and what I don't like. At the very least, for eighty-five pounds, I'll, I'll get some use out of them and I'll be able to use them when I'm going out running. The thing is, it, it's weird. I don't know if do any of you guys run. It's um, it's kind of like swimming, where if you do it for too long, it gets very boring if you don't have someone to talk to or you don't have music to listen to. A few miles is fine. I don't mind running a few miles um, without music, but see when you're doing longer distances, like the other day I did like seven miles, last week I did, I think it was eight, and when you're running that long without music, it just gets very boring. It gets very boring. Um, I can maybe bring over this, get the overhead camera. Have you seen Minecraft RTX yet? No, I've not seen that. The the Jabra 75T Elites, I really, I really did strongly consider those, Simon. I really did consider those. Um, yeah, I was very tempted to get those. Very, very tempted. Um, but I, I came across these. I must admit, see when it comes to technology, I am sometimes sold on the whole novelty factor um, as far as, oh, that looks different. I'll try that. Um, but, right, let's see if we can do this. Can I jump over? Boom. Okay. Bring you down. Bring you down. This will give you a better, un better look at these. So, as I said, I got these from eGlobal. eGlobal, I got these ones from. And um, if I put them over for you, I can show you the website. I'll bring this over. But uh, if you look at the back here, this is how they sit. And IP67 premium pitch 2.0 stereo sound. I think the battery life is eight hours. It should say that somewhere. Two year warranty. Um, if I change to this, so this is the website. Cheesy, sporty people. Um, so what's it saying here? Enhanced audio, music and calls, eight hours of battery life, IP67, not recommended for lap swimming. Yeah, just fine. Really, I'll, I'll, I'll be using these exclu exclusively for running. That's it. Um, and there's a little preview of what I might see in the box. Looks The overall package looks quite good though. Yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't really like buying something like, see like the Jabra assignment, I wouldn't really like buying something like that for the gym because these, as I said, they're not really good for the gym. Um, right, let's see what this is all about. Let's, this is always the hard part. How do these open? Are these, is this a, a pushy thing? Is it a, yeah, it is, it's a pushy thing. It is a pushy thing. Right, okay. Okie dokie, that's my charging cable for my phone in the way. Okay, right. Oh, it's another push, is it? Or is that an open up? Yeah. 
This is the boring part. I didn't know that this was going to be like push it and then you have to push it again. Oh, it's, it's not. It's an opening one. That's why. Do you know why I could no why I couldn't do that there? That seal there is kind of at the bottom there, so it wasn't pushing open. But there's like a little part there. See it? Yeah. <sighs> one of those days. One of those days. So there's the latch down there. Be open. Be open. Let's see. Is that going to come out? Come in. There we go. That's me a little bit better there. Oh, that's the presentation on this is really nice, actually. Right. Hopefully I don't get the coronavirus. Well, stereotype there, but coming from China, China, who knows? So these are the headphones. And... Oh, they're tied down here. So that's them there. They've kind of... Can you hear that? Can you hear that sound? Uh, so this part's really flexible. Um, this part's really flexible. So it's got a proprietary charger there. Um, which, it's one of those things, you know, it, it, all companies seem to be doing that. I, I guess it makes sense. If you've got a Type-C connection, it, it makes it more difficult to have, like, um, waterproofness and all that kind of stuff. So it does kind of make sense in that in that part. Um, there's a, I'll zoom down in a second, but there's, like, volume buttons there, and there's, like, a power button there. But that's it, and I think that's, that's the microphone there. I'll show you all that in a second. I'll just get everything else out the box, I think. What have we got here? Right. I must say the presentation's really good. Presentation is good. Right. Oh, this is a rippy open one. All these different methods of getting things open. This is a rippy open one. Right. So we've got our case. We've got anything else there? I think that's it. It's weird. What is why is that window there? Hey Ed! Give them a quick rub down before putting them, <laughs> putting them near your face. <laughs> I know, I know. There, there is a... Um, I keep... that. That's, is, it, is it just me or should that have something inside there? See there? There's a window and there's nothing there. I don't know. Um, I don't think there's anything underneath there either. Right. So I've got this little accessory box. Is this... Know what it feels like? See the kind of waterproof kind of stuff you get for scuba diving or for, for going out in a boat and different things? It's, it, it looks like that. Thanks, Ed. Appreciate it. Um, stopped using eGlobal. Didn't send my phone. Had a dispute with PayPal and the company. Yeah, um, they're a terrible company. I, I, I will happily admit that because I've had problems with them before as well. And I always use PayPal credit when I use them so that I can start a dispute and the money doesn't come out of my account. Um, but I found out that all the ones, you know, all these companies are very similar as far as terrible customer support. They don't want to hear from you once you've bought something, but uh, that is what it is. Right, so this is the accessories package. They've packed a lot of stuff in here, actually. Right, you've got earbud things in there. Okay. This is, this is a weird kind of case. I don't know what, how I feel about that. Right, um, so we've got user guide is in here. We've got a user guide. And it's there. Storage and maintenance. We've got what I was saying there. This is just a kind of quick um, thing about how showing you how it works. Connecting and all that. And what have we got here? Two different keels. One is the charger, which if I lose, I'm screwed. I'll just show you all this and then I can jump ahead and we can look at the actual headphones. Okay, so there's the cable. N nothing really exciting about that. But they've used uh, their own little cable system. So if I lose this, I am screwed. And then... There's another USB thing in here. Is that a spare charger? If that's a spare charger, that's very, very cool. My complaints about them using a, a unique charging system will be gone if there's a, a second cable in here. Let's see if it is. Let's see. Maybe it is. Or maybe it's a connection to put like another cable in. I don't know. No, it is. Okay, I take that back. That's fantastic. I didn't get that with my Garmin watch and that was like 500 pounds. So... Two cables. 
I like that. I like that a lot. Because I'm the kind of guy that starts putting cables all over the place. I put one downstairs, I put one next to my bed and things like that. So that's good. That's a, that's a big thumbs up so far, I would say, for that. Um, case. It's a waterproof case kind of thing, but it's a bit weird. But yeah. Um, yeah, so that's everything that's in the box. Headphones, case. I quite I do like the I do like the fact they put in those cables there. I think that's quite good. Guess they expect people to lose one. Yeah. But that is that is a that is a good idea. I'll zoom in in a second and I'll show you what's the, what this is all about here. I'll just try and tidy this up a little bit. Um I don't think he's wanting to see the user guide of that. That's not the most exciting thing. Why why are these here? Am I being stupid? Why are these things here? See these? Right, the light is catching that there. I'll show you an overhead. That's there. Why have they thrown those in? Why have they thrown those in? Like, what are they doing? I'm... Not that I don't like when they throw things in, but it's just weird that they're putting, like, earplugs. Hi, Nazir. Welcome back. Butt plugs. <laughs> Free butt plug. Um... Overall, I mean, if presentation is your, is your thing, I would say that uh, presentation is really good. Can't, com can't really complain about that. I mean, if I bring this back over, I mean, look at that. I mean, that's that's really cool. I think that's really good. They've obviously spent some time with that. So, um, cables, butt plugs, and then the case, all to the side there. Um, I want to just zoom in just to give you guys a better idea as to what these look like. Now, there's a few different colors. You can get this, if you look on the website, you can get black, gray, red, or blue. Now, I think my options at the time were red or blue, I think, um, and maybe gray when I bought from eGlobal, but I think the red, I think they look really good. So this part here is kind of weird. It's like a metal, it's, you know, it's, like it's, it's kind of like a metal frame inside, kind of like glasses really, and then this part's really soft. You've got the charging cable there, um, that's where it's going to go, that's where it's going to charge. That's quite cool actually, so if I take this off, I'll show you. The plugs are that if you want to immerse yourself with the music, blocking out the noise. Okay, there's someone, there's someone here who actually knows his stuff here. I was happy to go with butt plugs, but um, yeah, so if I show you this here, how magnetic are they? That's pretty good, actually. Cable's a little thin right enough. The cable looks like, this definitely looks like the kind of cable that's going to fray. This will fray. You need to look after this, hence the case. But the actual, I mean, that's a strong magnet, really strong. Most cables like this don't actually have this. Like, if I show you my Garmin, the one that I've got for that, which is downstairs, you need to like physically go like that and stick it in, like really, um, well, there's no magnetism, that's what I'm trying to say. This one, it's pretty good. This one's pretty good. So if I show you the rest of it here, above the charging point, you can see here, I'll maybe even getting further in, can I get the zoom in further in? There you go. And you can see there's a plus, there's a minus, the, well, that one's, that's like the power as well, I suspect. So that's the power and plus, and then there's the minus. So volume up, volume down. You've got your Aftershocks branding. And then the other side, you've got, that will be power, that will be play, that will be pause. I mean, most headphones work in the same way today, don't they? As far as what all the buttons do. So really, I will, I will use this a very limited way. You know, when I go running, I kind of, I'll push the power button, make sure the volume's okay, and then just go, and I won't mess about with it too much. But hope, I don't think that's, too bad as far as where it's positioned. 150 pounds in the UK, those. That's what you get. So, right, I'll, I'll try these on now. Let's see what these are like on my old man frame. So that's them there. Can it, yeah. Oh, they're actually quite comfortable. The only thing I'd say is you know, when they make these things and they make them for all different people, all different sizes, they have, you know, it looks like there's a little bit of space at the back. Yeah, like there's like, there's a gap here. 
I don't think that's not an issue. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Um, and there, there it's there. I look like an absolute twat, but um, <laughs> just, to be honest, when I go when I go running, I look like a twat anyway because. Um, like when I go running, I'd, I'm, I'm more of a functional person, you know, I'll wear woolly hats and different things just because I'd rather stay warm than look cool or anything like that. But, um, right, it's Felix there. That's it there. What do you think? You can see the gap with the back there, but um, I, I watched one review of a guy reviewing this and he was wearing glasses at the time. So if, if, I've, if I'm going out in this weather and I need to wear sunglasses, I think these will be okay. So... Yeah, got the butt plugs, got the charging cable. Have I got a charger up here? Oh, I took it downstairs. I took my charger downstairs, but what I can do, get the Nintendo Switch controller out the way. Uh, I'm actually giving my Nintendo Switch away to my girlfriend's uh, sister for a while because she's in quarantine and she's bored. Um, I'll get this charged up. Yeah, that cable is super thin, by the way. Really, really thin. Really, really thin. So, what do you think? Will this make a little noise or a light when it comes on? Yeah, they probably have some power in them. I just want to see how this works, though. Oh. Now, after all that, I'm not connecting it properly. No, it's this way, that's why. There we go. Oh, see that? There we go. Little red light. Yeah, they probably do have a charge in them, Paul. So I could probably um, switch them on and see what, how, it's, how it's working. I'll get my, my Bluetooth ready. So Bluetooth. Right, so let's see if I can get these switched on. Light is really bright there, isn't it? Um, right, so I've not looked at instructions, but I assume it's pushing this. Do I push that or is it this? Is it the plus thing? Am I going to have to read? Oh, it is. It's that one. So now it's trying to. There we go. As it comes up, I don't know if you can see that. Aeropex by Aftershocks to get the full branding in there. They've got the full branding. So I think that's that should go blue if it's connected, if it wasn't charging. But yeah. Pair it up. Should be okay. Very straightforward. So yeah, I, I reckon there is a charge in it. I reckon there is a charge. So I'll need to get copyright free music because YouTube stupid rules. Because if any audio comes out at all, it's absolutely insane how bad it is. Like you could have music in the background and someone will claim that video. I was I was actually I don't know if you guys know the YouTuber David Harry. He's a He's a, a, a guy from Liverpool, really nice guy, he does like kind of tech reviews and he was talking about this, how like anyone who's got videos on YouTube will have at one point have a copyright strike, but he has been, he has got a copyright strike from a music company that, ha, that are claiming audio for music he has produced or music content he has produced. So he's getting a strike for his own creation. It's completely insane. But that's why I don't really mess about with any of this anymore. I always use the copyright free music stuff from YouTube. Right, is that playing? Right. Can can you get can you guys hear that? Wow. Wow. Right, so obviously you guys can hear that. Now, I won't really understand the true effect and the true limitations of this until I'm outside, but in here where it's pretty quiet, um, that actually helps it. Uh, in here where it's quite quiet, it's um, the music quality is really, really good. This is the thing, you know, I was looking at a lot of your reviews and I just assumed they were going to be really bad, just acceptable level, an acceptable level for running, but... Um, Oh, I like these. I do like these. I look stupid, but I like these. So. I 
I'll try, I'll switch on my other microphone for a second. Hopefully these headphones won't fall down. Let's see if I, so, so you can hear them a little bit there, right? But I'm making it, I'm making those like speakers. I are I risked it. I don't, am I pronouncing that right, name right? Yeah, those are really nice. Um, I think you'll notice like they kind of pop back in together all the time. Um. Right, okay. First impressions are positive. I like those, I do like those. Um, yeah, I like those, I like those. So I'll get those charged up. I'm gonna go a run for, with them maybe later on today or tomorrow morning. Um, there we go, get them charged up. So yeah, those look really good, they, those look really good. So um, like I said, those are about 150 pounds on Amazon. I'll, I'll do a, another review of these properly in a few days uh, after I've tested them, but you know, cause it'll be different when I'm outside and I'm hearing cars driving by. They look really good though. Um, like I said, I bought them from eGlobal. Now I am not vouching for eGlobal here. Um, who was it? Was it Simon that was talking there? Yeah, Simon was talking about how bad they are. Um, and they are, they are. But I, I mean, I'd extend this to most Hong Kong based tech companies that sell things from China that you know, the customer service and all that is terrible. I, I mean, I've had this before. They've got like a fake delivery system where they keep giving you these fake tracking numbers until it's actually in the UK. Um, but I'll show you exactly where I got it from. And then, you know, obviously you take your own risk, uh, guys, with this kind of stuff. Aero, here we go. So there it's here, 86 99 I think I might have been actually been cheaper. I might have been, um, I might have been 84 99 or something. They, they always put the price up and down. Um, it says usually delivers in six to eight days, working days. I, I was about two weeks, so yeah, kind of on the ball there. Um, and they've got blue, they've got a blue pair as well. I'll, I mean, wait for my final review if you're not sure about this kind of thing, but um, again, I wouldn't buy these for the gym either. Don't buy these for the gym. I've not tried them in the gym yet, so I can't vouch for that, but from what other people have saying, you know, the whole idea, the whole concept behind these is that you put them on, for example, if you work in a warehouse, you can listen to a podcast and you can still walk about talking to people. Or if you're running, like I will be running, you you know, like whenever I go running, it's like every, I don't know, what, 300, 400 feet and then you're at a road with a, you know, you need to make sure the cars aren't there. So for that kind of thing, I'm hoping it's going to be good. Um, Nazia, so many have subbed yet not many commented or even viewed your videos. Sad. Ah, oh, thanks for the troll. I appreciate you coming into my video. <laughs> I, I, Nazir, I, I mean, it depends with, I mean, this is the thing with YouTube, it depends on the video that you're referring to. I've got, I've got a couple of videos that are a couple of hundred thousand views. Um, YouTube, YouTube is weird though. YouTube is weird because, um, YouTube is weird because it's not always your best videos that rank well. You know, you, you just, sometimes you, um, sometimes a video will do well simply because no one else has covered it. You know, you know, someone hasn't talked about that subject or reviewed that product. You've got a lot of, you've got a lot of um, reviews and all that. A lot of views. Mark Cas Brownlee gets phones like two months early. Yeah, I've I watched that one, Paul. I watched that. Well, I watched. I, th I didn't. I don't think I watched the last two minutes, but I, I watched that review. I mean, this is the thing, guys. You know, I, I wrote an article about this in my blog the other day about like my growth on YouTube has been super slow. I'm, I've you know, there's guys that get to ten thousand subscribers in like six months and all that. I've taken like seven years, but when you look at my videos now compared to seven years ago, the quality is so much better. But then you look at guys like Marquis Brownley. I mean. He's fantastic. His videos are just, his videos are like Hollywood. That's what they like. You know, they're amazing. Um, e Global have the, um, let's see what they've got here. Audio. 
So Simon's just pointing out that, oh, they've got, they're 190 pounds 99 just now. They do change the price a while, but yeah. I, this is the thing, you know, there's certain things I wouldn't buy from eGlobal. Like I probably wouldn't buy anything I think might, like I probably wouldn't buy a Nintendo because you'd want it to be, you know, you want the official support in the UK for different things. Um, I've bought I've bought a few different things here from here though. There's like I bought a phone, I bought a camera lens, I've bought a few different things. I think for headphones though, I think for headphones, generally if these things work, then they work, and you're not really most of the time you're not gonna have major problems with them, um, when using them. You know, and the thing is for most companies, it's not like. Yeah, it's not like you can troubleshoot. It's not like software or like a tablet not being updated with software. They either work or they don't work. So after you get them, if they work, then it's the same as buying them locally. But I don't know. He has a 10 grand camera for filming. I, I suspect his camera is worth more than that. I suspect some of the equipment he has got now, he's probably, I'm not going to say millions of dollars worth of equipment, but it's probably, it's, it's probably tens of thousands minimum. I mean, if you look at, I've seen a few behind the scenes video, uh, videos that he's done where it's, he's got all the cranes and different things, but even the warehouse he's renting out will be like $10,000 a month. But he probably makes tens of millions of dollars per year from his channel, so it's a, it's a huge business. He gets paid for his reviews. Um, I, I, yeah, I mean, I suspect, I mean, I, I'm always kind of suspicious of all top YouTubers as far as the um, what they're getting paid for and what they're not getting paid for. I don't know how it works as far as, I don't know, I don't know. I, I think it comes across as a really honest guy, really likable guy. I'm sure if I met him in real life, I'd, you know, I'd really like the guy. Um, and I wish him all his success, his, uh, success because he deserves it. But as far as YouTubers getting paid behind the scenes for reviews, this is, I mean, that, this is the thing, you know, I, I've run into this problem myself um, on my other YouTube channel, on my cryptocurrency YouTube channel. Um, as far as it can be hard to monetize certain channels unless you do sell out. So I'm thinking about with that one, either changing what the focus is or giving the channel away or selling it or doing something. I don't know. I don't know if you want me to expand on that, but it's, um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, has he been paid for reviews or uh, or has he, because cause I've, I've seen Marcus Brownlee being very critical of certain products as well. So I don't know. So tempted to think the Sony cans were £300 when they came out. I think they were even higher than that, Simon. Um, my friend Gary, um, uh, Gary McDowell, that's, uh, he, he, um, Gary was the one that gave me the iPhone a loan of when he, and he gave me a few other things to test and he, he swears by those Sony headphones. He says they're amazing. The reason why I've not bought them yet is because I've actually got like a cheap pair of this kind of, you know, these kind of headphones in my bedroom and they pretty much do what I need just now. What I would like to get eventually is for like video editing and for live streaming, buy a better pair of cans, but one that, you know, use a wire. Flossy Car. Uh, Flossy Car is amazing. He's fantastic. This is your boy Floss, coming back with another video. Yeah, he's great. I like him. I like him a lot. And that's the thing, you know, I, I, there's very few people I subscribe to that I don't like it because I think that most people gravitate towards people that they, they think they would like in real life. So most of the guys I subscribe to, I, I quite like their personalities. It's not just the reviews or anything like that, you know. Tech Tablets has just uploaded a video on the real me. Ah, that's good. His, his reviews are really good, always in depth. Um, the, the level of detail he goes into in his videos and testing and all that. And that's the thing, you know, I can never do a channel such as uh, Tech Tablets as far as, like I find what he does inspiring, but also like, for example, battery tests, you know, people sitting draining a battery for eight hours. I've got absolutely no desire to start testing the battery life of products and running them down, making graphs. I, I would go nuts doing that. I would get so bored. Will you be trying out the new iPhone SE? Um, I don't know, I haven't really, I've not really given it a lot of thought. We, we talked about it brief, briefly earlier, Ed, um, as far as, 
I don't know, we talked about it earlier, but I think what everyone is saying here is that it's overpriced and there's there's a lot more powerful Android phones that are available at a better price. So I don't know. I'm, I'm tempted by it, but I think I mean, the main focus I always look at is the kind of video recording side. I'd, I'd probably be more inclined to go for the iPhone 11 because if you were going for the, um, the SE2 at, what, £470 for the 128, you're only another £100 for the, the iPhone 11. I'd, I'd be tempted to do that. But I don't know. What do you think, guys? Do you, you like the iPhone SE? I, I maybe if I, I mean the thing is obviously we can't go outside, but if I could see it in my hand and, and go wow that is small, I'd maybe I'd maybe end up buying it. Yeah, Floss is great, is he? Mister, who's the boss? Rings a bell. I can't think of who that is off, off the top of my head. Yeah, for for, for a, an iPhone, it's a really good price, Ed. Um, but there are a lot of really good Android phones at the same price as well. But if I bought it, I would probably buy it as a second phone rather than the main one. White shoes is the house. Oh, white shoes is in the house. <laughs> Sorry, I misread that. Paul wouldn't, Paul wouldn't waste his money on the iPhone SE. Um, what I would say is I loved it. I didn't buy the original SE, but a few friends had it. And I thought it was amazing. I thought it looked fantastic. But the biggest problem was battery life. That was one of the major issues with that device. Like, it, the battery life was... Basically, you had to charge it fully twice a day. And I I, I I use this phone way too much as it is, as far as I, I watch videos on it all day, I listen to podcasts, I listen to music, I'm texting, I'm browsing my website, I'm replying to emails, I do everything to it. And that's where battery life would become a major concern. And it's it, it might be quite difficult for me to go from one to go to the other. But I don't know, I, I'm, I'm tempted to get it just to see what it's like. Because the thing is, I'm not a big fan, I've done it a few times in the past, I, I referenced the OnePlus, but I'm not a big fan of buying things and then having to sell them later, you know, buy it for the review. But iPhones always sell, so I don't think I'd lose a lot of money if I did do that, so maybe I should. Where did I get that shirt? My brother bought it for me actually, it was a gift, so I have no idea. But this, I like this because the Atari was the first ever games console I had. I did Atari 2600 and I loved it. Played it to death, it's where I got addicted to games. only has a 2000 milliamp battery. I don't think, iPhone doesn't, uh, Apple don't normally tell you what the battery life is, do they? Do they not give you some weird kind of spec as far as playtime rather than telling you the battery size? Is it 2000 milliamps? Right, hold on, I want to I check that out. Let's see that. Right, let's verify that. You're, you're probably right, guys. I'm not trying to doubt you. I just like to um, double check this. It's not even 2000, right, so. Um, so this is it here, guys. This is the iPhone SE 2020. I don't know why they're not calling it SE 2, but I think it, this, like from the back, I think it looks really good, especially in red. Three gigabytes of RAM. Look at that, 1821 milliamps, 1821 milliamps. Um, I mean, it does have an LCD screen. It does have a smaller screen size, so, it might have better battery life than an iPhone. It's got a 3000 milliamp battery, but I don't know what to say. Like the CPU isn't going to be, you know, that's still, I don't know how efficient it is, but that's still going to be burning up a lot of, a lot of battery life. It's got fast charging as well. Key wireless charging. Um. Yeah, that's, that's not good. Anyway, you look at it, that's not a good battery. But I mean, it's one of those things though. Smaller devices do have smaller batteries, so... There's not much else you can do about that. Um, I don't know. Right, so weighs 148 grams. It is smaller when you look at it, but I don't know. It's not as appealing as I thought it would be. I would have ideally liked to have seen the cram an A13 into the original iPhone 4 chassis, but I guess that was never going to happen. I don't know. I, I'm, I, if, I, if I bought it, it would be more of a curiosity thing rather than I'm going to use this type of thing. <laughs> Simon. <laughs> That's like that meme. You ever see that meme where it shows you like the evolution of mobile phones? The, you know the one, you know the one I'm talking about, don't you?
Um, yeah, that, so see that comment, Simon? This is the, that's making me think of this one. Where it's a, uh, here we realize we can see porn on the mobile. <laughs> so the phones are getting smaller and smaller, and then they get bigger and bigger. <laughs> there, there, there is some truth in that, but obviously, you know, people watching YouTube and all that as well, but yeah. Um, literally everyone has Super Mario Maker 2. Yeah, I've got it as well, actually. I've, I've got Super Mario Maker 1 as well. I've got Mario Maker 1, so I'm not a sellout. I've got it somewhere. Have I tidied my desk up at one point? I do have Super Mario Maker 1 as well, which is quite good as well. Redmi Note 9S, 6GB RAM, AMOLED display, 5020 million battery, 180 pounds. Yeah, I mean, and this is the thing, this is why every time I think about getting an iPhone, I realize what I could get with the money. For example, instead of buying that iPhone, I could get the Red Knight, Redmi Note 9S, I could get a tablet and I could get a pair of like headphones or something. Um, I don't know what, what, what review is that, Nazir? I'm, I, I can't click on that when I'm watching. The second version of what, Nazir? I like these. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to trying these out. I'll need to check what the, the charging thing indicator means as far as when it's fully charged. Oh yeah, I missed a few comments here. Jealous of the second. Have you got the first version this year? I think I've got, if I can Mario Maker in this just now. I'll be honest, I've not played this in a few months. Um, and I this this is reflected by the fact that it's zero battery. I've probably unplugged it, that's why. Yeah, I've unplugged it, I've got no battery. I need to plug it in. Um, it's popping up Nintendo and then I think it's just gone away because there's no battery. Yes, no battery, no battery. I need to charge that up actually if I'm giving it away. Mario Maker 2 is a lot of fun. I do like it. I do like it. But did any of you guys tune in when I did uh, a few live streams about Mario Maker 2 on my gaming channel? Which I admittedly need to restart because it's been months now. Um, but it's funny because every second comment is play my level, play my level, play my level. And then you go to play the level and you realise that it's literally impossible to complete unless you designed the map and you knew the little secret area to go in and no one has completed it because it's just such a bad, badly designed level where you can't actually enjoy the game. Um, is the Switch worth it just for Fortnite or shall I wait for the Switch 2? No, I wouldn't buy anything just for Fortnite, but I'm not a Fortnite player, so I, maybe I don't know. You pronounced my name wrong, Kevin. Wow, you're getting very angry there. You're getting very angry. How do I pronounce your name? It's not a common name. I've never heard that name before. That's how I would pronounce the name. Nazir. Hey Paul, no problems mate. Thanks for watching. I'll catch up with you soon. Um, Naz, then Air. Nazir. Okay, where's the name from? Where's the, where's the name from? Nazir, where are you from? See, I've heard I've heard it pronounced the other way. I'm sure I have. Nazaire. Okay. Um, still, okay. Simon's pondering over buying a Nintendo Switch. Do you rate it, mate? Notice the prices have jumped up with the lockdown. Um, I, I, I think the Nintendo Switch is a fantastic console. I think most of the games are overpriced. Like, if you compare it to the PS4 and the Xbox One... If you're simply looking at from a gaming perspective as far as what games you can play on the system, um, the PS4 and the, um, the Xbox One have got a better games catalogue and the, the games generally tend to be cheaper. But there's a lot of exclusives on the Nintendo Switch, the Mario games, the Zelda, all these other kind of games. Uh, they're fantastic. The ability to play it, um, you know, just take it anywhere with you, you cannot do that with a PlayStation 4. Uh, you cannot do it with an Xbox One and that's why you have to pay a premium. 
It's, it's a great little device. The, I mean, it's the same. The, the problem, though, is like accessories tend to be quite expensive. Um, this is one of the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. I would actually recommend that because the, the Joy-Cons, this is cheaper than the Joy-Cons. Those cheap little Joy-Con controllers that are at the side, those things are like £65 or something in the UK. They are not built to last. They are not built to last. Um, this is, that's that's really good. Generally speaking, um, generally speaking, I would say uh, it's a good console. But... As far as the overpriced, I mean, I've, I've saw some people saying that it's totally overpriced. You know, people are saying, selling it for crazy prices. I wouldn't pay the crazy prices. I would go out and buy the Wii U. Like, I've got a Wii U down there. Um, I would buy the Wii U. Where's the, where's the Wii U controller? I've got the Wii U controller up there, which is huge. Um, but from a purely gaming point of view, if, like, for example, if I was trapped somewhere where I didn't have good internet, or, you know, I just wanted to get the most gaming... And it, and it came down, people were selling this for like £300 for a Switch for £300 or $300. I would probably just buy an older Nintendo Wii U. There's still many classic games on it. There's a huge games catalogue and you won't be ripped off. But, yeah, well, that's the thing, Simon. I would I would maybe gravitate towards the... Um, if I can get it over here. Oh. So I've got... A few things up here. So I've got... Coming back. So there's the Wii U. Now, you can actually play this remotely as well, but you obviously need to be near your console. R around the house though, I would say this this actually is more enjoyable playing than a Switch as far as being comfortable. It's more comfortable playing this. The screen isn't as high res though. Um, the Wii U controller, that's really good as well. Um, but you can still get games like that on it as well. That's, that's, that's the first Mario Maker. And that's the one that's on the Switch, Mario Maker 2. Um, Mario Maker 2 is probably a better game because of all the online stuff, but Mario Maker 1 is quite good as well, so I don't know, I mean, it depends how you approach this, from a, a purely gaming point of view I, 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 that's the thing, you know, a lot there's a lot of uh, revisionism with um, with gaming you know, you'll see lots of you'll see lots of people talking about um, older consoles and they say this console failed, this console was a joke I mean, maybe commercially the Wii U was not as, succe as successful as Nintendo wanted it to be. But from a gaming point of view, this is probably one of the most fun consoles I've had over the last 10 years. You know, me and my friends used to play it all the time. So many great games on it. And from a purely gaming point of view, you can pick this up so cheap. You can pick up some of the older games on this, like for 5 or 10 or 15 bucks. I would definitely be tempted to go down that route if you just want to play games. But obviously you know, people want to buy the latest console, they want to get the latest games, they want to play Fortnite, they want to play different games, so if you want to do that, you need to pay the premium, so that is what you have to pay. So Nazir is from Pakistan, cool. I've never been to Pakistan or India yet, I'd like to go over that to that area. Um, PSP is awesome, the PSP is awesome. I had the original PSP before it came out in the UK, I got it shipped from Japan, but I, I later gave it to my brother and then got a PSP Go. Three hundred and twenty pounds from Tico buy. That's that's so expensive though, Ultra, because it's crazy, isn't it, that those prices are like that? Because um a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago, or even last year, that the switch wasn't even that expensive. What P what PSPs you got, Evo? I actually need I need to do some videos for my gaming channel, I've not done any in a long time. Can you teach us how to make YouTube videos? YouTube YouTube videos are... Well, it depends what type of YouTube videos you want to do because you can literally just push the record button on your phone and then just click the upload button on the YouTube app. That's how you can do a YouTube video. And that's how I have did many YouTube videos. Um, but as far as teaching you how to create YouTube videos, that's another channel, you know, as far as dedicating your time to educating other people how to do videos. I'm probably not the best person to do it either. You know, there's a lot of people that know a lot more than me. A lot more. Editing. To be honest, I'm I'm not a great editor at all. I don't I don't have the the, the patience for it. Um, if you look at a lot of the top YouTube channels, 
Um, I don't know, this is, maybe this is why I'm not, my channel's not as successful, but if you look at a lot of the top YouTube channels, some of the tech channels, they do like four minute tech videos, five minute tech videos, or eight minute tech videos, um, and they might spend two hours recording it, different various clips, and then they'll spend two days or three days editing it. And personally, I don't want to spend three days editing videos. I, I get bored doing that. I, it's just, yeah. Yeah, it's just not, not my forte. What I normally do is record some clips and just stick them together very, very crudely. Uh, that's how I normally do it. But you can even see with myself just now, everything I've got set up as far as changing from, to the browser, changing to the overhead camera, changing back to the main camera, everything I've got set up is trying to streamline it to stop me from editing. That's why I do that when I'm recording videos because I don't want to edit. I don't want to have to record each clip like the overhead clip, the, the browser clip. I don't want to record those ep separately and then put them all together. I want to record and then just quickly pick the start point and the end point and upload. And I know that's maybe a lazy way of doing it, but I'd rather spend more time testing products and researching stuff and, you know, doing live streams. Live streams is more enjoyable to me. Before the lockdown, it was £250. Um, <laughs> two packets of flour, £15. Uh, my mate, my mate was sending pictures of uh, the prices of Buckfast on, on, on Amazon as well, and other people were, like the pick the the prices of toilet roll. Um, the original and the three thousand model red, white, and pink. All right, nice. It's amazing as well. You will see like the original PSP, but it used to you used to get the UHD films. You could watch films in your P PSP, which sounds crazy now because, you know, why would you do that? But that was like how many years, several years or more than that before tablets and phones and all that really had screens. Um, Nazair, certain videos mushed together with good quality. Um, are you talking about editing gaming clips? Is that what you're talking about, Nazair? What, what, what I would be careful of of doing that kind of stuff is, um, is a copyright. Like we kind of touched upon that earlier, but just be very wary of taking people's other people's videos and then putting them in. You know, um, now I like I, I get copyright. I get people stealing my videos all the time, right? There's a there's a copyright part. Let's see if there's any here. Is there any here just now? Let's see. Yeah. So I'll give you an example of this. There, right? See if I can show you this here, right? So this is my browser, right? So this is my YouTube. This is behind the scenes of my YouTube channel, um, and you can see here. See this. Now this is their copyright system. Now what they've done is they have taken 100% of my video and uploaded it to their channel. Not giving me credit, not taking, check out Kevin's channel now. They've just stole it. They've just stole it. So you can see they've got 12 views, but what that means is they've got 12 views that should have been on my channel. Now that's maybe a bad example of this, but sometimes because I've recently cleared this list, but at one point I had like four or five pages of people stealing my videos. Some of them had thousands of views which means that I've lost potentially many subscribers and views, but it's not like people are actually, you know, just borrowing a part of the video and said, you know, it's, it's not like they've said, oh, check out, you know, Kevin said in his review this and then showed you a clip. They are just stealing the content. Be wary of that because when I click on that, right, I generally try to be a nice guy, not hurt people with this. So what I do is I say, you've got seven days to do this or it gets removed. But the other option YouTube gives you is give that person a strike, which means that, you know, three strikes, your YouTube channel is deleted. So I try not to do that, but if you're going to be putting lots of clips together, you need to be very careful because if someone doesn't like the fact you've done that, they can just, well, they can just give your channel a strike. So, um, yeah, be, be aware of that. Evil, all oh, right, you're being too kind here. I saw, saw toilet roll going for over 15 grand. <laughs> uh, yeah, I still think I still find that whole thing puzzling. When someone, <laughs> someone said that to me, you're not worried about toilet roll? I was like, I'll just jump in the shower or something. I don't know. I'm like, I, I'm not worried about it. It'll work out. Um, have you heard of Yakko's World? No, I've not heard of that. What is it? What kind of channel is it? Yeah, UMD films, they were great. 
You meant videos from file, not YouTube videos. Yeah, so if you're just, okay, if you're not taking con content from others, sorry, I misinterpreted that. I thought that's what you were talking about because that's what everyone seems to be doing nowadays. Um, if you're just taking uh, videos from your own files that you'd have recorded, you can do that with any software and it really is just drag and drop the files and then you'll do like a fade in or a fade out or a slide between the clips and that's it. It's very simple. You can fo follow the tutorial that you get from any, you know, from any... Um, that way. From, from any um, software they'll have a page saying this is how you use it and that's all you have to do. It's not that bad. What's Yako's world? You posted that twice, have you not? Or, or am I getting mixed up? You posted it once. Where is it? I thought I saw that twice. Right. Yako's world. Um. I don't know what it seems to be, Yakko's World. It seems to be cartoons. It seems to be cartoons. I, well, I'm not gonna, I can't listen to the now. I can't listen to the video just now, any Nazir, uh, Nazir, I can check it out later. Because I can't listen to the audio, I'd have to put the headphones on. Yeah, I'll just make sure I'm seeing all the comments here, if I missed any. Yeah, but the it's uh, especially in the gaming world. See the kind of clip thing. It's um, I don't know how I would react to that because um, hi Cedric. Oh, he didn't have to. He didn't have to give us a tip. Uh, he didn't have to give us a tip there. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll answer that in a second. But um, what I was going to say was see the. See the uh, the gaming clips. I don't know what I would do if I found people were stealing the clips from my videos because I think you should always give credit with that. But I've seen a lot of these compilation videos, like for example, Call of Duty or Fortnite or or whatever. And what people are doing is just taking the the videos, the clips from the other original person, and they're not giving any credit whatsoever. They're not saying taken from this channel, subscribe to this channel, and then linking to the channel. They're just stealing it. So that's um, yeah, that's some. I don't know where I stand on that. I don't. I don't like it if I'm honest. Simon's the way to watch fake tags in his 7.2 inch phone. <laughs> right, cheers for watching, Simon. Thanks. Um, you don't have to apologise, Nazar. It's, it's not a problem. Don't worry. Uh, so, Cedric, are you still watching, Cedric? I assume you are. Um, best OBS software for streaming with Elgato HD60+. Plus. Um, are you talking about Streamlabs or uh, what's the other ones? I'm getting mixed up with them. I've got a few of them installed. Um, what other ones have I got here? I've got OBS. I've got Streamlabs somewhere. What, what one? There's one of them that integrates with OBS. Uh, so what is it you're trying to do with it, Cedric? Is it for recording games or is it for... There's, what's the other one? Streamlabs and... I've got to just turn it. OBS. There's Streamlabs. There's... There's another one as well that I'm missing. Streamlabs, OBS, OBS, and then there's another one. I can't even think about it just now. I've probably got it installed on my computer somewhere. So, okay, so it's for, for Twitch, Nintendo Switch. Um, I, 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 I have tried these other ones, Cedric. I've tried the, um, I've tried Streamlabs. I've tried whatever that other one is that I can't think of. Uh, I've tried them all and basically what Cedric is talking about, OBS is a software that I use, it's what I'm looking at right now, it's what I'm recording, what I'm st streaming with and because it's open source software, you know, developers are allowed to build upon it so there's other alternatives of OB OBS that just build upon uh, the base software and you've got ones like Streamlabs and whatever um, and a lot of streamers will opt to stream via OBS, some will do it through other ones. Now, I've been doing it through OBS. Some of these other services, what they do is they cater things to game streamers. So for yourself with, with Twitch, they'll do, they'll do overlays and different things that you can import. Now, you can actually do this on OBS anyway. You don't have to use them. Um, for example, what one have I got? Like, I've got ones like this, like, where I can put your comments like this, right? Um, and that is, where's that coming from? See that, it's black there because that's supposed to be like a green screen behind me. 
Um, but yeah, I've, I've basically, you're, I, you can set up overlays like that and, and different things like be right back and thanks for watching I've set up and you know, that's where if I'm streaming the game and then that's where the stream is starting and things like that. You can set up these things. They're a little bit simpler to set up with these other uh, scripts with Streamlabs and different things, but you can in integrate those into OBS as well. I keep going back to OBS because it's it's got the cleanest design, Cedric. It's, it's kind of, there's less bloat there's less things in your way uh, and you don't have to stay logged in to someone else's service in order, order to use it. So I just find OBS is the simplest way to do it. I've tried other software as well. I tried XSplit. I had, I had like three premium licenses thrown in with games and different stuff. I didn't like it. I don't like Elgato's game capture software. OBS uses the least CPU resources. It's the simplest. It's always updated. Personally, I would start with OBS, Cedric, but... I realise if you're trying to record from Twitch, you might want to uh, branch out. What I would say is start with OBS, learn OBS, learn how it all works. Because if you do that, when you try one of these other OBS-based applications, you will get a better understanding of what they're building upon. And you'll be able to see, well, they're doing that better, they're not doing that better, and you'll have a better comparison. That's that's the way I would, I would do it. But if you've got another question, just let me know. Um... Elgato released a new game capture card. Which one, Ultra? Have I missed this? Have I missed an, a, a, a new capture card? I'll need to check that out. Oh, I'm on the wrong browser. Um, you need a, you you don't need a PC for it. What one's that? Again? Oh, I think I've seen that one. Yeah, yeah, I have seen that one, Ultra. I, I, I saw that one a few months ago. Maybe a month or so ago. Um, yeah. I have seen that one. It's um, it's the 4K S Plus. Is that the one you're talking about? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have seen that one. So, did I do a video about this one? I can't even remember if I did a video about this one now. I can't remember. Um, this uh, this is appealing to a lot of people, and I can see why. Um, so there it's here. I'm, I'm trying to think, I mean, there are situations where I could actually find this useful despite the fact I don't really need it. Um, yeah, it's um, it's a good idea. It's, I, I can see the certain types of streamers that this would be very, very useful for uh, and it will save them a lot of hassle. Um, and I can give you an example, Ultra. So, like I've got my PS4 there the Wii U, the, the Switch, I can connect all of these up. I've got the Elgato HD60 S and the S Plus, and I've got other devices I can use, but the idea is that they all go through the Elgato, but then they all have to go through the PC. Now, for example, I've been playing Call of Duty, I've been playing Modern Warfare, I've been playing Warzone. Now, I could record very easily through the PS4, but that the quality on the PS4 and Warzone is pretty terrible, in my opinion. They've done a really bad job. Um, whereas I could do it through my laptop, but if I want to record from my laptop and stream through this PC, I've got a dual PC setup, I'll have my gaming laptop set up. This is what I need to do actually. If I've got a gaming laptop here, I need to run the HDMI through the, um, my Switch, my HDMI Switch, I need to run it through the Elgato, and then I need to record. Now, in a live, no problem Ultra, thanks for watching. In a, in a live streaming environment, that's not really a big problem. As far as I'm recording it, I'm recording it live. Where I think a device like this can really come in handy is if you just want to record everything that you're recording and then edit it later. So, for example, my gaming channel, I can do a live stream and I could just stream live. I think in that situation, you'd be better with the... Well, not better, but the, the regular Elgato will do the job because you're going to have your PC on anyway, just live stream through OBS, like I said. Um, but if you edit, if you simply want to edit clips, like for example, uh, Nazar was talking about editing clips, this is where this device would actually come in very handy because, for example, if I do, um, if I'm going to sit and just play for six hours with my friends online, I could just sit down on stairs on the couch, hook up the PS4 via this, uh, you know, put this through it, and just record everything to the SD card. And then I've got six hours of footage. I don't know what the, the limit is to recording on this, depends on the SD card. 
But the idea is that I could just record and I don't have to worry about streaming. I just record, I just record, and then later on, I come upstairs or go to my laptop and I've got six hours of footage recorded on an SD card, upload them to my computer and I can go, okay, clip, 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 and I can just record them all. So I don't have to hook up the Elgato in a laptop. I don't have to hook up all these different things. I just get one device that does it all. So from the most of the ways that I'm kind of recording gaming videos and recording videos, this isn't going to be useful for me. But if I changed it and I started doing like compilations and edited videos, that would be perfect. But um, oh, sorry, I've just noticed Ultra posted a few comments here. Okay, I've got uh, so many chats on famous YouTube streams. So many chats, oh sorry, this is from Nazarene. So many chats on famous YouTuber streams spam non-stop. It's crazy trying to get noticed. What do you mean by spam, Nazarene? How do you do this and not go broke? Uh, I work. Cedric, thank you so much. I'm definitely going to try OBS. Love the content. Just found your channel and you got a new subscriber. Oh, thanks, Cedric. And thanks um, for future. You don't have to make a tip or anything like that. I actually, I might disable the tipping thing because I'm I'm not a big fan of people tipping in order to get, you know, for me to respond. Um, yeah, if, if you're unsure about that kind of thing, I, I get a lot of requests like this with email and that starts to feel like work. But if you leave it, if, you, if I'm doing a live stream, just ask me and I can explain it live. It's a little bit easier to explain it live. But um, yeah, just let me know if you're unsure about anything. I don't want, the, the thing, that's the thing, someone was, you know, someone said that earlier, why don't you do, teach people videos, teach people how to do YouTube videos, but I don't want to constantly do like educational OBS videos on this channel all the time. Yeah, well, well that's the thing. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be cheeky, cheeky evil, but it's like, how can you afford this? It's like, I'm a 40 year old man. You know what I mean, it's like, I'm not a high school, you know, I'm, I'm not, I, I, I work, I've always worked, I've been working since since I was 16, um, yeah, you know, I, I got, I, I mean, since I was 16, I was doing like 30 hours a week, and, and then went to university and all that, and yeah, so, uh, yeah, I work, I work, that's the short of it, I, I work about seven days a week, though, that's the thing, I, I really take time off, if I'm honest, that's probably one of the 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 biggest problems I have and that's that's the thing that I've um with my YouTube channel that why I've not did videos the last few months I've just had too much work um <laughs> it, it's, it does seem like a bit of a silly question um thanks Nazelle thanks Nazelle um but um yeah I'm going I'm going to have to try and do some more streams on my gaming channel that's what I'd like to do as well for this channel though, that's the thing, I'm just talking about how I don't like to edit videos. I've got about, I've probably about, got about a dozen or so videos that are nearly finished that I just didn't finish a few months ago um, related to my laptops, which were, one of them was brand new at the time, but now, like for example, I didn't do a final review of my XPS laptop and now Dell have released another one, so it's outdated, but I've been using it every single day for like, what, six months now, seven months now, so, or six months, so, um, it's, it's linked on my YouTube channel somewhere, where is it linked, it is linked somewhere, in fact, where is it, it's probably easier to go to my, um, I'm going to, I can't remember the exact address because I've not got one of the vanity URLs for it yet. Um, if you go to my website, go to YouTube, and then you can see it there, my gaming channel. So I've got it li listed there. And I've not did a video there for a while, months. But um, yeah, I need to, I need to, like three months ago. So I've not done a video on this channel for two months. It's three months in that channel. The thing is, I'm playing, I'm playing games more. I'm playing, I'm honestly playing about four, four hours of, Call of Duty at night, every night. So I really need to get back to doing videos for that as well. So I'll, I'll copy that link for you if you want it. I need to start that back up though. I mean, you're not gonna get a lot of content right now, but. Oh, I forgot all about that, Evo. <laughs> I forgot I ran that. Yeah, no problem, mate, no, no problem at all. Um. Yeah, I need to get it going. 
I need to, I mean, again, it's, it's trying to streamline it all as well. But the, the videos that I've got, the, most of the stuff I, I need to do videos for for this channel, they're kind of old, but I want to do them anyway because, and this is the thing, it's, it's kind of Cats 22. I mean, I've talked about this before, but a lot of the top YouTubers, you need to rush out videos and you need to do them quickly before you've really tested the product, where some of the stuff I'm, I like to do videos about are long-term reviews, like after I have used them every single day for six months. Like I've got the Elgato lights just out of shot here, just out of shot there. Um, and I can show you them switching on just by doing that and that. You can see the lights coming on. Um, and I want to give you my thoughts on that, for example, despite the fact they've been out for a year and a half. So I'll maybe do uh, some videos about that. Thanks, Nazelle. Um, yeah, I'd like to do long-term reviews about that because you see lots of people coming out here. And most of the, the annoying thing on YouTube, again, I'm complaining, but when you see some things like Elgato Keylight, they just send that out to all the top YouTubers and because they got it free of charge, they think it's amazing and they, they say it's worth the money, despite the fact, I mean, they're good, I like them, but they're far from perfect and they're more than twice the price in the other lights that I've got that are arguably more versatile, so... Yeah. All right, Gary boy! <laughs> I actually mentioned you earlier, Gary. I mentioned you earlier, Gary, because I see my friend Gar Gary gave me a, friend, uh, a loan of the iPhone. Good to see you, mate. Yeah, I, I've, I've just had a ton of work. Um, I've had a ton of work, as you know. Um, so G Gary, Gary, uh, Gary gave me a loan of um, the iPhone. He gave me a loan of a few different things, didn't you, Gary? It was a few different phones, I think. Um, Gary also Gary also offered... What was it? What was the phone that, that your wife got, Gary? Gary offered me his wife's brand new phone. I didn't want to accept it because it was like a gift for his wife, but he says that I could use it for a few days and unbox it and all that. Um, but that's when I was kind of stepping up my work. Um, so, oh, the real me too. That was it. Yeah, because I was I was thinking about buying it myself. Um, yeah, so I, I basically did no video. So, what the main reason I'm not doing any videos the last two months is I needed to take on a lot more work. I'm trying to make more money. Um, we've well, me and my girlfriend we're moving in together. We're moving to a house, we've got a big deposit to pay, I need to save up some money for that kind of stuff. Um, so I was like, right, YouTube is not making me money, I need to take a step back for a few months and make some money. But I need to scale that back and try to do more videos. Yeah, I like I liked the look of that, Gary. It, look, it looked like a really good phone. It was it looked really good value as well. I think, I think it was, I think they, they sold that from like a European website as well, didn't they? They had like realme.eu. When will you play Minecraft? I don't think I'd be very entertaining in Minecraft because I look like what I am, which is a 40 year old man playing Minecraft. Um, yeah, with Minecraft, I've played the demo before. I, I didn't really get into it. I'd probably, I probably would enjoy it if I got into it. I just haven't played it yet. Like beyond, I downloaded it on the PS3 or 4. It must have been the 4. Uh, years ago when it came out, but I never really played it a lot. I can see why people like it though. How are, you, how are you, Gary? Are you still okay? Are you... Are you, are you not to get too personal, are you okay work-wise in that? Because I know the whole... I suspect with this whole pandemic thing going on that financial companies will just screw over contractors. Um, ah, that's good, Gary. That's good. Ideal. That's ideal. It, it's funny, though. See, during this whole lockdown... Um, the whole pandemic thing, it, it, you've you've seen the true colours of a lot of people, like celebrities and companies, um, like companies making billions of dollars and they're just sacking, like after like three weeks or whatever, three three weeks of no business and they just, they have to sack staff. It's ridiculous, <laughs> like how some of these companies operate. Um, it's really been an eye opener as to, you know, how, I'll, basically what they think. And you see all these people like billionaires, they're asking for, for benefits and all that. Your son's room is so small. I, 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 okay, have I missed something here? <laughs> what do you mean your son's room is so small? You mean for playing Minecraft or his room in Minecraft? Am I confused here? What's, what's going on? Oh, you missed it earlier, Gary. Unbox these. You seen these before? I think they stopped charging. Seen these before, Gary? 
I did the unboxing earlier, so th this is them here. So, pretty cool, mate, pretty cool. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Bone conduction, so they're bone conduction earphones. The bo bone conduction earphones, like, and they sit. Look at that, snazzy. They don't actually go in your ears, they, they, they vibrate. They use the bone conduction through your cheekbones. Um, if I can switch these on. I thought you'd maybe like these. Um, because I know you like your audio and stuff. Oh, in fact, the plus button, the power button's down there, isn't it? So, um... Yeah, you do like that, but the idea is when you're running, you do that, and you can still hear all the cars and all the audio behind you. So if you see me out running, I'll be wearing these and looking like an idiot. Anyway, that's the idea. Um, I the the problem. See, I think the iPod, the Pro earbuds look good. The I think um, I think they'll be good for the gym. It's just I've I've got a pair a uh, Fire Tone or I don't even know how you pronounce them. I've got a pair of wireless earbuds, and they're great for in the train and things like that, but. The problem is when you're running, they just pop out. They just pop out. Yeah, for cycling. So this is basically the... Where's the website? I've got the website up here. This, um... Yeah, so th this is them here, Gary. So the idea, the idea is they don't pop out. And the idea is that you can hear everything around you. You can hear cars. You can hear everything around you. I don't know what they're actually like. I've heard that when you're actually in the gym... You can't even hear them because the audio from the gym is is going over. Um, open ear listening. I don't know. I don't know what they're like. Um, there's the earplugs, the butt plugs that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try them out though. I'll I'll try and go out for a run because I mean I've I've been a fat pig staying indoors, so I'll try and go out for a run and see if they're any good. Yeah, they look they they look good, but the, um, I went for the the cheap Hong Kong delivery option because they're hundred they're one hundred and fifty in the UK, but they're eighty five if you order from Hong Kong. So I did the usual stereotypical Scottish type guy uh, method of buying it and went for Hong Kong. Okay, right, we need to work out what's going on in Nazir uh, here. What's going on here? Out of nowhere, he says. My son's room is so small, mine is huge, my bedroom is massive. That's a euthanism. I, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> is there a separate chat that I don't know about? Is this a separate conversation? I don't, I really don't know what's going on there. <laughs> mine is huge. I don't know what's going on. I really don't know what's going on. Well, it's not this. It's not the size of the boat. It's the motion in the ocean, mate. So I'm sure. I'm sure your son's bedroom is fine. I I really don't know what that is referencing. I just mentioned it for no reason. <laughs> that was the most random. So you've just randomly come onto a, a Scottish guy's YouTube channel and just insulted your son's bedroom. <laughs> no, I've not sterilised them, mate. That's me. Got the. That's me. Got the monkey aids. I've got the monkey aids now. Got the bad, the bad uh, flu. Yeah, I'm screwed. I'm screwed. I'm hoping that these were made. They say 2018, so I'm hoping hoping the the bad flu wasn't around back then. But 2018 was the copyright. Yeah, I probably got it now. But that's the thing. That's the thing with the coronavirus. It looks like it. You know, you see all these reports coming out. It can stay on cardboard for like a week and all this kind of stuff. You're like, what chance have you got? You've got absolutely no chance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. I'm screwed. I'm definitely screwed. It's uh, it's funny though because um, I've noticed the I've noticed the the most of the, the guys that are delivery like delivery guys or delivery people. Um, most of the people are delivering stuff to my house. Like I bought I bought a blender the other day. I bought these. I bought some other things, and then. Um, most of the, the, the delivery guys, UPS, Amazon, all that, they're not wearing gloves, they're not wearing masks, so obviously they're at risk if there is anything, you know, any problems with things like that. 
But there was the, the, who was it? I think it was when I bought the blender. I bought a blender the other day, right? Because I'm trying to get a wee bit fatter. I bought a blender because my other one, my, other, my old blender couldn't even smash ice. And um, <clears throat> it was so weird. The woman chapped the door, right? She wore a mask. She didn't wear gloves. She wore a mask. She chapped the door. And then she put the box down. And I went, oh, is that the del delivery? Just like normal, polite, someone at your door type of response. I was like, oh, that's the delivery. Oh, thanks. And she just stared at me and just kept staring at me, walking backwards and then turned around, shook her, shook her head and then got out of the car and drove away. And I was like, what? The? It was almost like she wanted to fight me for ordering something. It was bizarre. Do you like Sonic the Hedgehog? I, by that, I mean the bedroom issue. What? <laughs> Do I like Sonic the Hedgehog? By that, I mean the bedroom issue. I am, I think we're getting lost in translation here. Yeah, but I do, I do like Sonic the Hedgehog. Who doesn't like Sonic? Everyone loves Sonic. Everyone loves Sonic, everyone loves Sonic. Did, uh, Gary, if you're still watching, did you see the new iPhone? Be good to hear your, your opinion of it. So Gary, Gary was in the Android world, I think, were really you in the Android world, but he switched back to Apple, he's got the iPhone 11 Pro, I think you've got, isn't it? Um, I don't know if you've seen the, the new iPhone SE. Can't you see my first message? Yeah, what's your thoughts on it, mate? What's your thoughts on it? We were, we were talking about it earlier. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave a link to it here, mate. So, um, I don't know if this is of son you'd... Be interested in. <clears throat> so it's like a 4.7 4 inch screen rather than, um, you know, what's the other ones? Like 6.5 and all that kind of stuff. I can't remember what the exact dimensions are. It's got big bezels though. Big bezels. It's good. So the thing it's got going for it is the, the latest A13 Bionic chip, but it's, um, it's got, it doesn't look like it's got good battery life. The cameras aren't as good as the iPhone 11 and things like that. Yeah, I, I was impressed by it, Gary. When, when I had the iPhone 11, I was really impressed. The, the video and the audio quality was tremendous. Um, yeah, the video and the audio quality were really good. Really good. And that's one of the things, that I, I, I think I said that earlier on, that if you're going to pay £470 for an iPhone SE, I'd probably prefer to just pay another £200 or whatever and get an iPhone 11. I think it would make more sense to get an iPhone 11 than buy the SE. But I don't know. I've not physically saw the SE. Maybe I've been impressed by how small it is and things like that. Maybe it looks really nice in person. I don't know. I'll need to. I'll need to. I'll need to look at more reviews of this uh, and to get a better understanding of it. I was talking to my friend Kevin Rooney about it. Um, Gary knows him. We were talking about maybe doing, um, maybe talk about doing a, a video about the iPhone and give our thoughts on it. So I'll maybe try and do that with Kevin. Maybe do a, a video like that. Yeah, I, I I was impressed by it, Gary. I was really impressed by it. Um, I think um, I, I think it was it's overall a good package. It's expensive though. I mean, the the money that one of the reasons I didn't buy it though, I, I um one of the reasons I didn't buy it, I ended up spending I must have spent about three four grand in the space of like a month, and um, I bought two laptops, I bought lights, I bought what else did I buy? I bought game cap a new game capture device about all these other things i honestly spent about three four grand in the space of a month um so then i was like right i'm going to buy the iphone i'm like eh. <laughs> you know i was like nah i'll put it i'll put it in the back burner for now i'll put it in the back burner but we'll see right guys is there anything else you want to chat about or maybe start tying up the stream tie it all up Appreciate, uh, appreciate guys at Evo and all that starting out, uh, sticking with the stream because at the start it was an absolute nightmare because it wasn't uploading properly, it wasn't streaming properly. Um, um, all right. Actually, the company that, that caused that problem, they've actually just replied and said maybe you should switch to another server because the one you're streaming to isn't good. I don't know. I'll, I'll maybe see. 
No, I'm gonna. I'll see. What, I'll see. I'll, I'll look into that to see if I can fix that. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Gary, mate. I'll need to get you on. I'll need to get you on a video one day. I'll need to get you on. Um, hey, Time Bandit, you've come in just at the end. Yeah, Gary. If you if you have a fancy coming on, giving your opinion on things, let me know. We could always do like do it via Zoom or something like that. We could always do it that way. If you fancy doing it that way. But um, thanks for watching, everyone. I do appreciate it. It's good to be back. Um, yeah, it's good. It's good to catch up. I'll, I'll maybe try and do some games as well on my other channel. It'll be good to do some videos on that at one point. Maybe do some games if I can find some time tomorrow. Maybe. Um, yeah, it'd be good to do that as well. Um, but yeah, Gary, if you have a fancy coming on, I'll, expen I'll ex extend that to any of you guys as well. If you have a fancy coming on, we can chat via Zoom. We can do you know chat about phones and different things. Um, let me know. I can try and do it. I'm going to go out and try and do a run. I'll try and do a couple of miles to see what these are actually like. I'll link these up to my, my watch. Put the music through the watch and, and try them out. And I'll try and do a review of that over the next week or two. Yeah, thanks, Time Bandit. Sorry, man, you turned up a little bit uh, uh, late at the end here. But, um, yeah, thanks, Desert. Thanks to everyone that's tuned in. I'll catch up with you all soon. But if you if you want me to do a, a video or talk about something, a live stream in the future, send me a me message on Twitter or leave a comment or something, and I'll catch up with you all. But uh, thanks again, Gary. Gary helped out a lot with the channel. Uh, I don't know if you saw that. Gary, you still watching? I don't know if you saw the, the video that I did the other day, but... Um, I should have thanked you personally, but I, I reached 10,000 subscribers. I did a little thank you. I'm amazing video. Um, but yeah, thanks for all your help with it, Gary, because you provide, you provided a couple of phones and a few different things for reviews. So appreciate it, man. I do appreciate it. Try get, we'll try and get you on in a live stream and some of the rest of you as well via Zoom. I'll, I'll subscribe to the Zoom app again. Yeah, cheers, Gary. Appreciate it. Uh, but I'll try and get some of you on. I think it'd be good to do the Zoom thing. We'll try and get some different people on in a live stream. No, no. It, I mean, it, it does help. It does help having help. Like Devin, all that gave me Eleni's GoPro before as well and different things. It does help because buying all this crap isn't cheap, <laughs> which is why I'm working so much. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for sticking with the live stream through all the problems at the start of the video. Um, I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're staying safe and I'll speak to you all very soon. But until then... Take care and I'll speak to you all very soon. Cheers, guys.